Hey guys, thanks for stopping by. This is going to be a little short tutorial with Twig. I'm going to be teaching how to use a JTAC inside of the mission editor or the joint tactical attack controller. This is going to allow you to designate targets via IR laser, Willy Pete Smoke, and laser designate so you can search and track for their laser. They'll be able to laser targets for you to help you find them and designate them for your bombing runs, your targeting runs of any kind, honestly, with any vehicle. This is pretty cool. It can be set up with ground units and air units. So I'm going to go ahead and show how to do that here. And in part two I'm going to make after this, I'm going to actually show and demonstrate how to communicate with them properly and utilize them in a real mission scenario to help spot targets in an area in which would be nearly impossible to find on your own, such as inside a crowded forest or a crowded city of a lot of buildings and structures. But for this example, we're just going to be doing a pretty open area for this first part, just so you guys get an idea of how this works. Right here, I've got a pair of typical APC BTR-80s and three infantry units. They're pretty small and spread out, so on the ground themselves with IR, it'd be pretty easy to find. But let's say that they aren't on the map and you don't know where they're going to be. This is where the JTAC really shines. And in single player especially, this can be a lot of fun for you guys who don't feel comfortable going into multiplayer lobbies. This is something you can quickly and easily add into your missions that will make them a lot more fun. It gives you a whole new direction, allowing them to tell you how to attack your target, from what direction, etc, etc. It can be great fun. So first, we're going to go ahead and be USA. I'm going to select, oh, okay, I can't do AFAC first. I'm going to go to the EQ-9 Reaper drone. It starts on reconnaissance. I don't think this is super important to change this, but I'm going to anyways, as AFAC is the appropriate designation. Put it down, and I should be able to select AFAC. There it is. And it will automatically give this an FAC option here. If this was left on reconnaissance, you would have to manually add that, which is fairly easy. You can go to... I believe it's perform task or set on route task. Maybe you do have to be. I may have been wrong there. It looks like you do actually have to be on AFAC, which is important for the aerial vehicles. For ground vehicles, you don't have to select a task. And I'll demonstrate that here in a second. I thought it was the same for aerial, but I guess we're learning this together. So you don't want FAC assign group. That's not the correct one. You want to find start and route task and FAC. As I showed earlier, it already automatically applied it when I went to AFAC, but just to make sure if it's not working for you, double check that this is here. You can edit this and you can choose the call sign. For this demonstration, we're just going to go with Uzi, leave him on number one, and go ahead and leave it on the 133 megahertz. Now when we add a second one of these, the ground unit, we are going to change this so that way they are on separate frequencies. Uh, and that's really all you need to do. I'm going to put this guy to safe 16,000 feet. Uh, the Reaper drones do have more visibility the higher they're up, but if they're up too high, they may have trouble struggle and struggle finding certain targets. So keep that in mind. If I want this guy to be able to spot all these targets, 16,000 feet right about here should easily allow him to orbit and find these. To keep him in place, I'm actually going to add orbit. This will keep him in this position, in a circle pattern, at this speed, at this altitude, indefinitely until he's either shot down or runs out of fuel. Now the fuel thing we can fix, they actually recently added this. If we go to perform command, we can go to unlimited fuel. And this will allow him to indefinitely linger and orbit in this until told to do otherwise, if you give him more waypoints, etc. Another thing that you can do is, let's say there are active SAM sites in the area, and you don't want the JTAC to be engaged by said SAM sites, you want him to still be available for tasking, even with active SAMs in the area, you can simply add in Perform Command, Invisible. This will keep him invisible, you won't see him actually physically flying around, but it won't interfere with his JTAC capabilities. He will still be able to laze, designate targets, and throw down Willy Pete whenever he needs to. So this is just a great way to kind of get around having this option without worrying about it getting shot down or having to have him fly in after you take out a SAM, which are things you can do in a more complex mission if you choose, but this is the more simplified just trying to teach you how to set up a JTAC in general. So let's go ahead and turn off the invisibility and just delete that because right now I want to be able to see him. 
So I've got FAC on and set up. He's all good to go. He's going to orbit here at 16,000 feet indefinitely because he is on limited fuel. Next, I'm going to put a ground unit down to demonstrate how they work as a JTAC. Now this is important that you pay attention to your placement and elevation. If this unit is below the elevation of these units, he will not be able to spot these targets for you. He won't even know that they're there. And he'll tell you the area is clear. So make sure when you're putting these units down, you put them in an area like this. If you can see, this is the highest point of this area and it's nice and clear. There's a big field here between the targets and where we're at. You can double check that by clicking on satellite. And you can see this is a fairly open area. And if this is his hill, as this says right here, you can tell by the topographical map, should be able to drop him right there. I'm going to go ahead and switch him to a scout Humvee. He does have a gun on him, so in this case I want to make sure he's just out of range of these infantry. I don't want him to shoot at these guys. I just want him to spot them for us. Now if I wanted to, again, I could make this guy invisible, so that way he is not engaged by any troops. And I can also give him a ROE to hold fire, which I believe, these are, I always get these mixed up, here it is, it's in set option. And you can set his roll of fire to return fire only or to just straight hold weapons. This can be handy if you want to again put him in a contested zone, but you don't want him to be engaged or engage enemy units. So in this case, we're just going to put him on weapon hold just to make sure. He shouldn't drive around, he shouldn't move around unless engaged, so he should just stay in this position. And he's well out of the range of these infantry, and I believe those VTR, yeah. So he's plenty safe right there. Alright. Now that he's in position, we're going to add the FAC option. And here it is. Just under Start and Route Task, you'll see FAC. Now you'll see the call signs are different. The ground units have a different set of call signs from aerial units. So we're going to go ahead and choose Dark Knight because that sounds badass. I'm going to change him to number 2 in the order of JTAC commanders. And I'm going to change his frequency to 134 so it is separate from the original JTAC we set up up here, the Reaper drone. Once we've done that, he is basically good to go. Now we've got a little scenario here where we can designate targets using either the Reaper drone or this Humvee up on the hill. And I've got a little F-18 over here that we can pop in real quick and give this a try and see if we can properly communicate with these guys. But bear with me while we load in. Alright, just choose the F-18 here. As you can see, the Reaper drone is visible. I'm going to go ahead and turn off name tag so everyone's nice and hidden. I'm going to pop in our F-18 here. I have my head tracking turned off, so it won't be jumping around for you guys. And we'll just hit fly, and I'll go ahead and pause. Now, I'm sure you guys already know how to use open up your communications menu. That's going to be important. It's the backslash key, uh, typically, unless you've changed it. And you'll see above air traffic controller, you now have JTAC as an option. If you go ahead and choose that, you'll now see the two different JTACs that we've selected. We know that Uzi is our Reaper drone in the sky, and Dark Knight is our unit on the ground here. So I'm going to go ahead and contact Uzi. I'm going to unpause the game while I contact him to ensure that it works. And we're going to check in. Uzi 1-1, one, one. this is Springfield 1-1, one, one. FA-18, Kilo Mike 7-6-6-5 at 7,000. I have 600 cannon. Playtime is 0 plus 15. Available for tasking. What do you have for us? He should respond momentarily here if it all worked out properly. Springfield. There one. he is. This is Uzi. One. One. Type two in effect. Advise when ready for nine line. All right. So we've gotten that working. Uh, this was just a good example of how to use them in the mission editor. In part two, I will be going through an actual mission that I have built to demonstrate how to communicate fully with them and use them to designate targets of various kinds. These are especially helpful in crowded cities and dense forests where targeting uh, sites such as IR sensors have trouble picking up these targets, obviously behind buildings or behind trees, where 
you would normally have so much trouble but with these guys they can really make things so much easier night missions especially this is a lot of fun when they use their infrared lasers you can simply use your infrared sights on the vehicle of choice or your night vision and you'll be able to see their lasers clear as day it is a really cool experience so I look forward to seeing that in part two again thanks for stopping by this is a twig tutorial